Just ahead, there's another edition of the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith, Public Affairs Director of the Florida News Network. And I'm political analyst Al Spry. Have we got a show for you? It's a special edition of Florida Roundtable, an explosive new book by Governor Jesse Ventura about the Kennedy assassination on the 50th anniversary of the assassination. They killed our president. Love him or hate him, you know exactly where Jesse Ventura stands on just about any issue you want to discuss with him. Stay put. The Florida Roundtable begins following these messages. This is the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith, Public Affairs Director of the Florida News Network. And I'm Al Spry. It's so great to have you on this special edition of Florida Roundtable on Tough TV across the nation. We're going to be talking with Jesse Ventura, author of They Killed Our President, a new novel, um, a new, uh, I should say, book. A uh, non-fiction book about yeah. 63 reasons to believe there was a conspiracy to assassinate JFK. And boy, Al, there are plenty of reasons out there. Uh, teach us with a couple of them, will you? Well, here's a couple of reasons. Uh, 80% of the American people still do not buy into the Warren Commission's conclusion that President Kennedy was murdered by one lone nut gunman uh, known as Lee Harvey Oswald. That They believe there was more to it. Also, Robert Kennedy Jr. in an interview with Charlie Rose earlier this year, back in January, said that uh, that JFK's brother, Bobby Kennedy, privately believed that the Warren report was, quote, a shoddy piece of craftsmanship. Hmm. And Uh the CIA is still withholding over a thousand documents as national security classified. This is 50 years after the assassination. Here we are 50 years later. Hard to believe it's been that long since JFK was gone. I remember the moment exactly. But we will be joined by Governor Jesse Ventura on his new book when we continue in a moment. We are back. You're listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Al Spry. And, of course, uh, we presume you know who you are. We thank you for the pleasure of your company. And, Al, at this point in the program, as promised, we are joined by Governor Jesse Ventura. And, Governor, welcome back to the Florida Roundtable. Nice to have you here again. Well, it's nice to be here again. Always my pleasure to do your show. This uh, this occasion, you've got a, a, another brand new book out, and this one is entitled They Killed Our President. It's been 50 years since the assassination of JFK, and uh, you're subtitled 63 Reasons to Believe There Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. And, and so I guess I, I, I have to... Uh, ask you, the first natural question is, why do you think JFK was assassinated? Well, JFK, there were multiple reasons it could have happened. Uh, I've been studying this now diligently since 1985, reading everything I can on it. And uh, he made a lot of enemies. Uh, Bobby was the attorney general, his brother, and they were at war with the mafia. So there was the enemy. Uh, After the Bay of Pigs, he, he, he fired the top three CIA bosses and said he was going to break the CIA into a thousand pieces. Well, he didn't have any, uh, many friends when he said that. Uh, the oil companies were angry at him because he was going to rid us of the oil depletion allowance, which was their major thing of writing off to where they could make $30 million a year and pay no taxes. That was going to disappear. Uh, The Pentagon and the Joint Chiefs were unhappy with Kennedy because he would not go to war in Cuba, and he had already ordered the first thousand advisors out of Vietnam by December of 25. Had Kennedy stayed in office, there more than likely would have never been a Vietnam War. So when you add up all these lists, and then let's look at who gained the most from it, Lyndon Baines Johnson. The, the follow the vice president. He was neck deep in two scandals at the time: 
the Billy Solesta scandal and the Bobby Baker scandal, there was talk Kennedy was going to drop him from the ticket and that his political career was over and he very well could have gone to prison over these scandals. And, and uh, although the politicians don't generally, that doesn't happen to them, but there was that possibility. Well, they all magically went away when he became the president. Mm. Absolutely amazing. So uh, we, we've kind of opened the door a crack here. Um, I had, you know, uh, Lyndon Johnson did not hide the fact that the three years he spent as, as vice president were not productive years, and he wasn't very happy being the vice president at all. He, he was pretty public about that. Oh, yeah. No, it's well known that there there was great rift between the Kennedy brothers and Lyndon. And, uh, you know, the ch- and then, as I said, Lyndon was neck deep in these two major scandals in Texas. And uh, he was baggage. And there was talk that Kennedy was going to drop him from the ticket in 64, which certainly would have been the end of Johnson's political career. And uh, uh, but by uh, assenting to the throne or becoming the president, well, look at what he did. Let's look at some facts. Monday morning. Now, the president's limousine is a crime scene. We all know from watching TV, you don't even have to be a detective, that they put the yellow tape around it. and No one's allowed into the crime scene till forensic and the scientists are through. Well, the car is a crime scene. When they drove it to Parkland Hospital to attempt to save the president's life, yellow tape should have been immediately put around that car so it could be investigated. Well, Monday morning on orders from Lyndon Johnson, that car was already in Detroit, Michigan, at the Ford plant being totally refurbished. Mm. No one got to see the crime scene. Now, that's obstruction of justice. And you're going to say the president doesn't know that? Who, did, who doesn't know what a crime scene is? You can watch TV and know what it is. Well, I'm really glad that you put this book together. Um, I wasn't exactly uh, pleased with the books that had been coming at the last few years. You have the Bulosi book, and you had the Case Close that came out, and, and Bill O'Reilly's book. And, and so it's purporting this single lone nut theory, which has been propagated, of course, since the Warren Commission. And there are still well, many believers about it, but there are uh, there are about 80 percent of the American people that don't believe that it was just Oswald. So you, if, if you take the time to, to study and look at facts, it becomes clear that Oswald, we show in the book he couldn't make the shots, and there's physical evidence. The, uh, John Kennedy's actual autopsy photos discovered by Harold Weisberg, the, the great researcher, he's gone now, shows bullet fragments or metal, metal particles throughout his whole head. Well, that means he was hit with a flangible or exploding bullet, the fatal headshot. Uh, the Oswald weapon, the Manlicher Carcano, is a Geneva Convention weapon. It's, it can only shoot a full metal jacketed bullet. So there's physical evidence that the Oswald rifle could not have done the headshot. What more do you need? Why do you think that there's still this propagation of the, of the single uh, assassin theory? Of course, you know, the very first assassination, which was... Uh, President Lincoln was a conspiracy. Why is it so hard for um, for people like you know like like O'Reilly and Bugliosi, uh to to agree with that? Why do they want to propagate this single assassin theory uh, so uh, vehemently? Well, I, I would say you'd need to ask them that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't have the answer as to why they would do it. I came out from my own personal view and selfish reasons. I published this book because I've studied it since 85 now diligently. It's one of the great mysteries I love to read about. Anything I can get my hands on, I read about it. And uh, I wanted it on the record that the 38th governor of Minnesota is not buying it. I don't buy the Warren Commission, and I don't buy the single lone nut gunman because Oswald could not make the shots. Uh, and, and well, look at the look at the magic bullet. The easiest way to debunk that, the the, the, the actual magic bullet. I think it's ex, Exhibit 299 or 399, whatever the number is on it, mm-hmm. is this pristine bullet. Conley has more shrapnel removed from his body than what this bullet would be brand new. 
So how can they say this single bullet and there was shrapnel left in Governor Conley's body that they refused to remove even when he died? Yeah. They wouldn't do it because the bullet would then weigh more than it would have brand new. <laughs> yeah. well, that's yeah. laughable. Come on, people. How can a bullet get larger than what it would be brand new? That shows there was a, another bullet hit Conley. You can see Kennedy on this famous Zabruder film, a film we would have never saw had it not been for Jim Garrison's trial in New Orleans. Time Life had locked that film away. They weren't going to allow the public to see it. The only reason we got to see it is because Garrison brought that trial in the late 60s and subpoenaed it. And that was the first viewing the public ever had of the Garrison fi or of the Zabruder film. In that film, you see clearly when the president emerges from behind the sign, he's already clutching his throat. And the, and the doctors at Parkland Hospital, all of them, trauma care center, most of them combat veterans, the doctors and the nurses, all testified he had an entrance wound to his throat. Let me let me backtrack a little bit. I mean, this, uh, in in your book, uh, they killed our president. You provide us links uh, to material that is on YouTube from oh, yeah. the, the, the footage of November twenty second. One of those links is is Oswald being questioned uh, soon after his arrest in JFK's murder, and and he is very insistent he knows nothing about the president's murder and that he is a patsy. Now, now, what makes Oswald the perfect guy to frame in this thing? Well, because they set him up. They made him look like a, 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 a Russian sympathizer, that he was a communist. He was head of the Fair Play for Cuba committee, and he was the only member. Uh, Oswald was a low-level intelligence agent doing what he was ordered to do by handlers. And in and, and that position, you don't question things. Uh, he was sent to Russia and defected there. It's now been proven he was part of a false defector program that the Office of Naval Intelligence was running. Let's look at the, his military background. Oswald was a bad shot. That's When you go in the military, they test you. They give you batteries of tests, and you're required to shoot. Well, Oswald was an O300 infantry. He was a radar technician. Well, there's a reason. They, they try to send you where they can best use your skills. And, and we show in the book how Carlos Hathcock, the greatest Marine Corps sniper in history, is legendary. He was the chief instructor at the Quantico Marine Sniper School. He attempted to duplicate Oswald's shots ten times and could not do them. And you're telling me, a, a, another former military guy, a frogman, you're going to tell me that this radar technician who probably never carried a weapon his entire time, barely that he was in the military, could outshoot the greatest Marine sniper who's legendary in history? Well, let's, uh, let's take that theory a little further, that there was more than one gunman. Sure. Uh, there, there is uh, obviously some evidence. You could just see from the way the president's head reacts that Someone's shooting from the front. They said the yep. back of his head was blown off, but yet when they ha first released autopsy photos, they were doctored. They had a mat of his head to show like it was just a single little hole, entrance hole in the back of his head. And yep. if you look at the, if you looked at the later released autopsy photos, which were snuck out, they weren't they weren't released through the government. Somebody spirited them out and released them. The whole back of his head is blown open. Well, even better than that, read in my book the testimony of those doctors and nurses at Parkland Hospital. All of them veterans. It's a trauma center. They're used to gunshot wounds. Many of them combat doctors. And to a person, they all talk about the back of the president's head was gone. It was blown out that he had an entrance wound above the right temple and an entrance wound in the throat. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a doctor... And the president comes in, to, the president of the United States is, bring, is brought to you in a trauma center, and you're attempting to save his life. Don't you think you'd have a pretty vivid memory? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. There absolutely. you go. No and uh, read in the book how every one of these doctors and nurses at Parkland testified how the back of the president's head was totally blown out. Yeah. It wasn't there. We, Look at the splat, blood splatter evidence. Yeah. The police riding in the motorcycles. Well, get this. They had used the standard wedge formation for every one of Kennedy's 
previous visits. He had been in Texas two days where they form a wedge with the motorcycles around his car. In Dallas, that was changed. The four motorcyclists were up in a single rollway in front of him and four way behind him. And not, it was only changed that way in Dallas. And not only that, there's, of course, the famous footage of the Secret Service agents that are normally riding two of them on the back of the car, which was specially, yep. the bumper was specially built and handles on top of the uh, trunk Standard for operating procedure. And all of a sudden, Secret Service rides on the bumper. We, we allow you in the book to go to that tape and watch it yourself of the Secret Service man being ordered off the bumper as it's leaving Love Field, his arms stretch wide, palms to the sky, and you can just understand he's saying, what's going on here? He knows what standard operating procedure is. Why is he being asked to violate it? It is rather amazing and intricate, and and, uh, the depth of the whole thing what is your notion? Why did they put these secrets? Uh, who put them all? That's that, that's well, the we name the, we name his boss in the book, mm-hmm. and that's the man who ordered him off the bumper. Now, someone needed to ask him why did he do that? Why would he violate standard operating procedure with Secret Service? I'll put it to you this way: the Secret Service guarded Kennedy better that day when he was dead than they did alive. <laughs> because they were the same ones who pulled their weapons to take the body to Bethesda when state law said any homicide had the autopsy had to be performed in Texas. And at that time, killing the president wasn't a federal law. It it fell under straight homicide. If it was a murder, the the state had jurisdiction over it. Yet today, then they changed the law. Now it's a federal crime. Yeah. And the federal government handles the murder of a president. But at that time in 63, that law did not exist. And state law in Texas said that the autopsy had to be performed in Texas. Secret Service actually pulled weapons and took the president's body over the objection of all the local doctors and authorities. And we, we have the video of Lyndon Johnson, uh, an audio of him saying that, that they wanted the body as quickly as possible put on the plane to go back to Washington. But, Governor, we need to take a pause along the network line. Let us come back to that in just a couple of sure. minutes. We want to remind the folks that they are listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Al Spry. Our very special guest this day, Governor Jesse Ventura. His brand-new book, They Killed Our President. It's available at places like like Amazon.com and all your fine local bookstores around uh, the state of Florida. And uh, if you will stay put, our conversation will continue following these messages. From Pensacola to Key West and all points in between, you're listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith, Public Affairs Director of the Florida News Network. And I'm Al Spry. And, Al, we are uh, enjoying this conversation with our special guest today, Governor Jesse Ventura, his brand-new book, They Killed Our President, 63 Reasons to Believe There Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. Here we are 50 years later, and, uh, boy, lots of questions out there. And Governor, we were talking about the security detail uh, in, in Dallas that day. All of them, all the agencies were there, the CIA, the Secret Service, the FBI, uh, the Dallas Police Department, and the president is shot and killed. Now, were there double agents planted in the agencies, and, and, in, and is one of these agencies more responsible than the rest of them for this, for this assassination? Well, uh, it's difficult to say on, on that, but I will say this. Two conspiracies took place that day. There was the conspiracy to actually murder the president, and then there was the conspiracy to cover it up afterward. Now, you have players that may have been involved in either one or the other, and then, of course, there's maybe a few players that were involved in both. But there were two conspiracies that happened that day, the conspiracy to murder the president and then the conspiracy, of course, to cover it up afterward. I find it astounding. Uh, I talked with this guy, Mr. Newman, and everyone sees him on the Zabruder film. He's the guy who's got his family down on the ground, and he's physically covering them with his body, his two children. And he was the closest guy to the headshot, who physically saw the fatal headshot. He was never even interviewed by the Warren Commission. Mm. I was astounded 
when I sp- spoke with him directly, and they said, well, what did the Warren Commission say? Because he said the bullet came over his shoulder, which would have put it at the grassy knoll. And I said, what did the Warren Commission say to you when you testified to that? He said, well, I was never called to testify in front of them. Can you imagine? And they call that an investigation. No, that was a uh, that was a snow job uh, in, in the opinions of many, including myself. I, uh, I, I what I find interesting is is the collusion that I hear in some tapes between LBJ and uh, J. Edgar Hoover to uh, get this commission appointed, and to uh, and uh, you could just hear that you could just sense the cover up. Well, we we start the book with what's called the Katzenbach memo. It's not even one of the 63. I wanted to start it, and let me just paraphrase it quickly here. This is from Acting Attorney General, U.S. Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach to LBJ, the new president, Monday morning. Now, this is Monday morning. And at number one, here's what he writes. The public must be satisfied that Oswald was the assassin and that he did not have Confederates who are still at large and that the evidence was such that he would have been convicted had there been a trial. And then the memo finishes, and we print the whole thing. It finishes with the last line, uh, uh, there need, we need to head off any public speculation or congressional hearings of the wrong sort. Now, what, what, the president's been murdered. What could be a congressional hearing of the wrong sort? I, uh, that's a very good question. And, and the point being, this is a government document. This isn't Jesse Ventura speculating. And this went out Monday morning. I'll give you a personal thing with me. I was alive then. My mom kept all the papers from that weekend, and when she passed away in 95, my son was 14, and he and I were going through her chest, and we found these Minneapolis papers of that weekend that we didn't know she kept. Monday morning's Minneapolis Tribune newspaper, so that means it's pre-computer. It would have had to gone out late afternoon Sunday, only hours after Oswald was killed. Mm-hmm. Monday morning's Minneapolis paper sub-headline, Dallas police declare case closed. Mm. Now, they haven't looked at a shred of evidence. They've done no investigating. No one confessed. Oswald never confessed. Nobody can put the gun in his hand, which they even admit to that. The whole, you know, and yet the case is deemed closed Monday morning. I, you know what, my son, my son was 14 at the time. He turned to me, and this is, I remember it as clear for my whole life. He turned to me and says, gee, Dad, they spend more time on a domestic. Yeah, sure they did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and, and how could a 14-year-old boy come to that conclusion, and yet free-thinking adults don't see anything wrong here? You know what the reason I think that is? I think people like to be fooled. They want to believe yep. a certain thing about their government. They want to believe that it's a simple case uh, because then they could put it past them and focus on their own little uh, issues that they have in life and their families and close circles. And they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to think that the government could be behind this. Uh, and well, so that's that. That expand. always. Yeah. Go I, ahead. I think you're completely correct. And let me expand on that, if I may. They want to believe so much that their government would not lie to them. And they also want to believe that bad people can't get in government. And they need to become aware, yes, they can. Uh, you, can ha- you can love your country and not your government. I've always made that statement because the best example is Germany. The German people love their country. It didn't necessarily mean they loved their government in the 1930s. And the same holds true. Government is nothing more than people. And people can be evil. And we need to get it through our thick heads that we could be being led by evil people at times. Yes. Let me ask you this. The uh, Oswald's assassin, I have read and heard people speculate that there was a connection between the nightclub owner that shot on, on live television in the basement of the Dallas police station that he had ties to LBJ. Well, I can tell you this unequivocally. Lee Oswald and Jack Ruby knew each other well. 
We cover that in the book. There's multiple eyewitnesses, many, who saw them together on multiple occasions, who were introduced to them by each other, and yet the Warren Commission told us there was virtually no connection between Jack Ruby and Lee Harvey Oswald. And, and we debunk that in spades in this book. Well, not only that, there's, later on a, a memorandum came out showing that Jack Ruby was an informant in the House on american Activities Committee when Nixon was on it back in the late 40s. And then he became a Johnson guy. So there was ties between Nixon, Johnson, and Jack Ruby that never came, that didn't come to light until the late 70s. And even now, most people don't realize that. Oh, yeah. Well, how about this? On Nixon's famous Watergate tapes, the president himself on his own tapes, like people always say if it was a conspiracy, someone would have talked. People have talked. It's just that the media won't report on it. Nixon himself on his own tapes is quoted that that the Warren Commission is the biggest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. Well, that, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. There's a connection between the players in Watergate, the CIA operatives, including E. Howard Hunt, who died a few years ago and left some interesting uh, tapes for his son, and also between the Watergate, where Nixon was taken down. Let's talk about that. Well, there was connection. Uh, I, on, my radio, on my TV show, we got St. John Hunt after he was turned down by 60 Minutes. Uh, with his father's confession to having knowledge of the Kennedy killing. It was called The Big Event. I was so excited about it. I thought, oh, my God, my TV show, it's going to be headlines across America. Hunt admits to involvement in JFK death. Not a word. Mm. And we have him on tape, audio, visual, and written. You can clearly see he has his faculties. And he's confessing on his deathbed to his son. Wow. Of his knowledge of it, he names the players, he names LBJ, he names Cord Meyer, David Sanchez Morales, he goes down the list, he said he was on the outside of it, uh, he wasn't really a major player, but he did know that it was going to happen, it was called the big event. And all of this in our mainstream media from a guy who was involved neck deep in Watergate, who certainly could have been involved in this, and not a word from our mainstream media whatsoever. Governor, you talked with Oswald's wife, Marina. Uh, yes. What did she tell you about her husband's involvement? Well, she just felt today, uh, she, remember, they were threatening to deport her and her daughters. So she basically, and she did not want to go back to the Soviet Union, so uh, she basically, they had her over the barrel to do whatever they wanted to her, or they could have deported her. And so, but today she feels that that Lee was a government agent, that he, that he worked for the U.S. government, which changes the whole thing, and the fact that people didn't realize Lee and her were separated. Mm -hmm. That's why Lee would only go home on the weekends in Dallas to visit his kids and why he was living in the boarding house. The good book to read is Judith Berry Baker's book. She was Oswald's mistress in New Orleans. And she'll fill you in on everything they were involved in. They absolutely were working on a government project to attempt to kill Castro. Mm, okay. You know, uh, it's a great, me... it's, there's two books on it. You... Uh, her book, Lee and Me, and then another book called Dr. Mary's Monkey, yeah. mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. talks about them working with the famous cancer doctor, Alton Oshner. The guy whose name you see behind the, the New Orleans Saints every time they have a football game in the press room. Yeah. Well, he was part of attempting to, to kill Castro. Now, mentioning Castro, while you were governor, you went yep. to Cuba and you had a conversation with Castro. What, what did yes, he tell you? Yes, I did. You? In the what last 20 minutes of it, we spent on the Kennedy murder mm. because I wanted to get his perception. I had read so many stories about his possible involvement, and, you know, and he was alive and well and was a player at that time. And uh, so for 20 minutes, he talked to me about it. He said, number one, he said it was an inside job. He said, number two, Oswald could not make the shots. And he looked at me and said, you know that as well as I do. He said uh, uh, the other thing was the Soviets, who he, he was very close with at the time, uh, the Soviets, he said, stated about Kennedy, you can talk to this man. And then he dropped the bombshell on me at the time. At the very moment Kennedy was killed, 
Uh, Castro was meeting with a French reporter named Jean Daniel, who had been sent there by Kennedy. They were attempting to create a meeting between the two of them, and Castro felt that Kennedy was going to drop the embargo and start regular relations with Cuba. Mm-hmm. Well, there were a lot of people that didn't want that to happen. Now, Governor, uh, once again, we need to pause along our network line here. Uh, let us remind folks that they are listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Al Spry. Our very special guest this day, Governor Jesse Ventura, his brand new book, They Killed Our President, 63 Reasons to Believe There Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. It is available at all the fine bookstores around Florida and places like Amazon.com. And we'll continue our conversation following these messages. You're listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks and of Tough TV. I'm Reagan Smith. I'm Al Spry. Our very special guest this day is Governor Jesse Ventura. His new book, They Killed Our President, 63 Reasons to Believe There Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. Uh, You can find it at Amazon.com. Should be available at your local bookstore. If they don't have it, ask them. They can special order it for you. Go into the bookstore and, and say, have you got Ventura's new book about the JFK assassination. And, uh, Governor, we know how busy you are, and we do appreciate your spending all, our, all the time with us today to, to uh, at this point of uh, the 50th anniversary of the assassination. I was around, too, and I remember exactly where I was and what I was doing. We, en- we ended up spending just hours and hours uh, glued to the television set, uh, saw the Jack Ruby shooting live on Sunday, uh, and boy, I tell you, it scarcely seems that it can be 50 years, and, and I, I wonder if we're ever going to really know, but I mean, certainly there's an, you've, found, you've, you've uncovered an awful lot of material that, that points to the conspiracy. Well, and, and, and I challenge anybody, uh, you know, when someone's charged with murder, you have to be convicted beyond a reasonable doubt. We're giving you 63 reasonable doubts in this book. Now, each and every one of them could be an acquittal. So let's say hypothetically three of them are not true. Well, that means you still have to deal with 60 of them. Right. That are reasonable doubts. There is no way, in my opinion, any lawyer at all worth his salt, even a non-lawyer. Oswald could never have been convicted had he gone to trial. There's no way. Uh, We wanted to bring to the attention of our listeners and our viewers on Tough TV that you're having a hard time uh, getting interviews for the book. Uh, Let's talk about that. And, of course, we appreciate uh, Tough TV for airing this special edition. And, of course, uh, on our network, uh, Florida News Network. But uh, let's talk about that. Well, yeah, I can't. uh, Now, local I can get on if locals want me. But uh, normally I'm on national. uh, ABC won't touch it. NBC won't touch it. CBS won't touch it. Fox News won't touch it. Even tough Fox News. And MSNBC won't touch me. And I find that just astounding. That, uh, that they just boycott, and I can only assume either it's me or the issue. It's one and or both. But, uh, yeah, it's been a real eye-opener, this book tour. I, we've never received the negativity from the media uh, because of the content of the book that we had received on any of my other books. And I've, this is now my seventh one. So this you know book, sp- so this book got, specifically. I, wait, wait, I got yeah. six New York Times bestsellers, right? Mm-hmm. Yet the New York Times has never reviewed one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I find that astounding. Yes, it is. it is. It certainly is. It is. And 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 the reason behind that, in your opinion, what's your what's what's your gut telling you? Well, the mainstream media has the, has worked hand in hand with perpetrating this myth that Oswald did it. And do you think after fifty years, I like to quote Denzel Washington when he played Malcolm X. Do you think after 50 years they're going to admit they bamboozled us? <laughs> no, yeah, no, obviously not. No, of course they're not, not about not. to, so therefore they're going to marginalize people like me. They're going to marginalize and try to lump us together as kooks and all this. Anyone who questions, my question is this, in light of recent developments, all the lying that our government does to us lately, how could they possibly have credibility? Yeah. I don't see any credibility yeah. credibility lately, especially with the NSA revelations from exactly. Snowden, 
uh, the revelations. I mean, so many things. Well, going... let's go to the Iraq War. There yeah. were no weapons of mass destruction. There were no ties to al-Qaeda. The lying about the rescue of Jessica Lynch, the lying about the murder of Pat Tillman, the list goes on and on. Yeah. And yet I'm supposed to be the one marginalized because my government wouldn't lie about the murder of John Kennedy. Yeah. Governor... I find it astounding that people will take the hard line, and I've had them do it to me, saying, I don't believe your book, I believe the Warren Commission. Do you and be- I just go, well, you're, you're the minority now because 80% yeah. of Americans don't believe the Warren Commission. Yeah. Do you believe that there is more evidence out there yet to be uncovered? Absolutely. There always is. That's the great thing about studying this. It's like a Harry Potter series. <laughs> yeah. Every year or two, a new book comes out. Yes, a lot of it will be review, but a lot of it you'll learn new things. Well, here's one for you. Why can't we get Lee Harvey Oswald's tax return? Mm, no. It's under national security now for over 50 years, or it will be 50. And, and people might say, well, why would that be important? It's important because that would start a paper trail as to how he was paid. And if it turned out he was being paid by the United States government, doesn't that change the whole story? Well, what's funny is uh, Oswald's mother claimed he was a government agent, and they thought she was crazy. Uh, well, inc- and and, and, and his, Marina thought he was, too, when I talked to her. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I wanted to, uh, before we go, I wanted to get your, of all the theories uh, that you've come across, which is the most plausible to you? Well, again, he made so many enemies. Uh, I think that they're, they're, the most plausible was a triangular crossfire, and I think that they probably took a, 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 an assassination team that they were going to use on Castro, and they merely sent it to Dallas. And my theory, my, the one that I've uh, uh, ascribed to, is uh, is the one about LBJ. LBJ working with elements of the CIA, including E. Howard Hunt, Texas Oil, uh, H.L. Murchison, and and those guys to uh, to eliminate Kennedy because he wanted to be president. Oh yeah, then that's very plausible because of the the meeting that Madeline Brown talks about. We write about it in the book. She she was LBJ's mistress for twenty one years or something. Even bore his child. And she talked about a meeting with Murchison, Hunt, Hoover, the day before Kennedy was killed. And she said he came out of that meeting all red-faced and flushed and came over to me, squeezed my hand hard. And under his breath, he said, after tomorrow, those Kennedy boys will never embarrass me again. Mm. And that's... Now, Why would she testify to this? And, and, you know, I mean, is she a liar? Yeah, I understand. Well, and, and it really does. Uh, that is a most believable quote. There was no love lost between the uh, Kennedys and, and the Johnsons, and uh, that is a fact. I mean, Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson, uh, we, you can get the audio very easily of him complaining well, about his time as vice president not, not being treated at all. Basically, well, and also the fact that uh, Lin, you know Lyndon Johnson was neck deep in two major scandals: the yeah. Billy Solesta scandal and the Bobby Baker scandal. Yeah, and there was talk that he he could possibly face prison time. Well, amazingly, when he became president, all that disappeared. Yeah, isn't that something? You well, know, and that just went away. And, 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 and uh, you know, so when you look at motive and who profited the most. Unfortunately, you come to the conclusion of Lyndon Johnson. And, and there is enough uh, material there for you to do another book on this one. <laughs> <laughs> sure. There almost is, but no, I did my book. I, I'm going on the record officially stating I don't believe the Warren Commission, and for whatever it's worth, the 38th governor of Minnesota is on the record now, and I'm proud to have done it because that's what I believe with all my heart. Jesse Ventura, the former governor of Minnesota. Uh, The clock always runs too fast when you're with us, Governor, and we appreciate all your time this day. We do hope that you'll come back and do this again soon. uh, Well, Reagan and Al, appreciate it. It was fun to talk with you because yours is the type of show where you can really talk issues and get into it and educate people. And that's, you know, people need to understand you're never too old to be educated. That's exactly right. Exactly right. You're never too old. So you guys have a good one, and we'll do it again sometime. Governor Governor Jesse Ventura, yes. Brand new book, They Killed Our President, 63 Reasons to Believe There Was a Conspiracy to Assassinate JFK. And uh, this is the Florida Roundtable. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Al Spry, and it's great to be on Tough TV. And we'll be back with a brief closing thought following these messages.
This is the Florida Roundtable. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Al Spry. What a pleasure to have former Governor Jesse Ventura with us on the program today, Al. It was, and uh, there were many questions raised. I suggest that you do your homework, do some research. You may come to some interesting conclusions. And we'll see you again next week with another edition of the Florida Roundtable. You've been listening to Florida Roundtable, a weekly look at issues and problems of concern to Floridians from a state, national, and international perspective. Presented by the Florida News Network with your hosts, Reagan Smith and Al Spry. The views and opinions expressed during the preceding program are solely those of the participants and not necessarily those of this station's ownership, management, or sponsors of FNN. Your views and opinions are welcome. Address your card or letter to Florida Roundtable in care of Reagan Smith. 2500 Maitland Center Parkway, Suite 407, Maitland, Florida, 32751. Or you may email reagansmith at fnnonline.com. Thank you for listening, and please join us again next week for another edition of Florida Roundtable.